James? Yeah, take two, Ingrid. It's a <laughs> uh, yeah, marginally marginally positive session. Uh, August start the trade today, so spies up nine points. Obviously, U.S. markets. Um, yeah, they were soft early, but they closed on their highs. So some reasonable strength coming through there. Um, interestingly, resources stocks will probably be in focus today. We've obviously had iron ore up to $100 a ton. Um, some s slight softness overnight. So we should, could see some uh, slight weakness coming to the miners uh, first up today, Ingrid. Okay, the miners have obviously performed extremely well. I mean, when you see it, what's what's happened with the iron ore price reaching that $100 level, as you mentioned, there just seems to be no stopping it. Some have even called it somewhat defensive um, in light of what we're seeing at the moment. I know you guys at Shores um, really like some of the mining stocks. Do you think they have further to run, though? I mean, that's the question from here. Yeah, it depends what commodity you're looking at. I mean, iron ore is up to $100 a tonne. There's obviously um, some supply, supply concerns coming out of um, Brazil, met with some um, you know, strong demand coming out of China. So therefore, prices have been um, you know, really resilient on the back of that. Coal, for instance, has been... You know, coal has struggled, but it's staying to move higher. Aluminium's uh, been struggling, but it's staying to move higher. So, yeah, I mean, we're bullish on the commodity complex at the moment. I think we're going to see this coordinated stimulus coming um, on the back of the coronavirus. That's only going to be positive for the demand for resources. Um, and, you know, you look at Fortescue yesterday trading up at all-time highs. Um, Rio's been a lagger of Fortescue over recent times. So, you know, there's probably some value on a relative sense in, in Rio at this point in time. All right, so um, watching a couple of other things at the moment, um, James, when we look at markets, I guess there's a couple of key um, stocks that I know are in focus for you. Zip's one of them. What are you watching when it comes to Zip money? Yeah, they were in a trading halt yesterday. Uh, they may come back on the board today. So they're looking to raise um, money to, uh, to make an acquisition over in the US buying, or it's muted that they're buying quad pay. So they're likely to be doing a convertible note offer um, over uh, out of uh, private equity in the US. So that's going to be interesting when that comes back online. Obviously, the US is a massive market. This would give uh, Zip a, um, a really strong footing into that market. So um, watch that space when that stock comes back online, uh, perhaps today. All right, so what else are you watching, James? When we, you know, we've got a lot of risk in markets, obviously, at the moment here at home in Australia, but as well as around the globe. Although then again, we're coming out of this um, pandemic, hopefully looking at the other side. We've got stimulus packages still being announced by the government. Um, the latest one, obviously, related to housing. Are you watching housing stocks? I mean, obviously, yesterday we saw a lot of those construction stocks benefit. Do you think they can continue that rally today? Yeah, I think they will, Ingrid. So I think, you know, if you, if you think about... You know, the market from a collective sense, there's a lot going on from a, 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 at a top line level. There's a lot of headlines coming out of the US. There's obviously um, countries doing it, you know, recovering differently from um, the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So I think you've got to focus more on, you know, sectors that um, you want to be involved in. And, and, and the building construction sector, I think, is one of those. We've seen a pretty strong rally up from the, the lows. Um, and I think that'll continue. So stocks like Reese, for instance, that we've got in the portfolio, Bingo is a stock that we um, still hold in the portfolio that's going to benefit from any um, stimulus focused on uh, housing. Adelaide Brighton has been a, a strong beneficiary of it to date. Even Borrell, and you know, Borrell's got a stretched balance sheet. So um, I'm, you know, we don't own Borrell. I'm a little bit concerned about its balance sheet, but it's benefiting from this, you know, this uh, muted stimulus in housing. So you know, housing is incredibly important part of the Australian economy um, and it's only natural that the government would uh, target that for further stimulus um, uh, which is you know expected to be announced uh, tomorrow. So you think we can continue this run up in Australian shares? I mean obviously we've been outperforming the banks have done particularly well although they have had a bit of a breather um, as you'd imagine some a tiny bit of profit taking. What's your take on the banks going forward James? Yeah they're an influential sector. I think the market's probably got too bearish to banking stocks at the moment. You saw you know, a huge um, provisioning lines go through the banks when they reported recently. Obviously, that provisioning is being dictated somewhat by um, APRA's view around what, um, you know, the outcome of COVID-19 would be. We've seen um, numerous instances where the government has proved to be too cautious. Their forecasting has proved to be too cautious. We've had better economic outcomes um, coming on the back of, um, you know, opening up economies, etc. So, you know, if I'm having a, um, you know, if I'm having a stab in the dark, I'm saying that um, probably that um, that forecasting has been too conservative. That the bad debt experience from the banks may not be as bit bad as um, potentially they're provisioned for, and that's obviously a positive for the banks. But 
you know, time will tell. As you think about the broader market, we've dropped about 40 percent. We've rallied half of that. We're now still 20 percent below the lows. So, you know, although we're talking about, you know, markets being strong, et cetera, we're still 20 um, percent below those um, you know, levels that we saw only in February of this year. So it's a, um, you know, we've still got some way to go to recover. So um, the market looks expensive on current earnings multiples, but I think you've got to look through the um, sort of the noise in the short term and look to six to 12 months down the track and see what the economy looks then. James, want to quickly ask you something. We've just got some breaking news on Brickworks, so just listen in. Um, we've got sales revenue for the four months to the end of May down 10% uh, versus the prior period. So that's for the four months to the end of May, down 10% in terms of sales revenue. Since the start of the year, Brickwork, Brickworks has let go of over 200 employees. That represents around 10% of the workforce, and it's delayed all non-contracted capital spend indefinitely. Um, Brickworks, obviously one that we've seen take a hit um, from the pandemic. Um, it's clear here in what it's saying. What's your take on this one, particularly given what we've been hearing out of the construction sector in the last couple of days? Yeah, well, as I just said before, you know, markets start to look forward. And I think, you know, the, 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 the four months that we've just seen in Brickworks is obviously a tough period, no doubt about that. But um, to have earnings down only 10% during that period, um, the stock price is off more than um, more than um, uh, that by a reasonable magnitude. So um, I haven't seen the numbers on Brickworks, but, you know, 10% decline in some pretty tough operating environments. The market will tend to look forward and, um, you know, if, if at the move by Adelaide Brighton yesterday and another you know, a raft of other building um, stocks is anything to go by, um, then, yeah, it, it should be a, um, you know, it should be a positive outlook um, for Brickworks in the coming months, more so than the last four months that they've just reported on. Yeah, exactly. That's sort of looking behind. James Gerrish, appreciate your time on Ausbiz. Thanks so much for joining us here. Thanks, Ingrid.